Online daters are apparently lowering their standards and giving up the search for their perfect partner. Well, a study reveals that two-thirds of 18 to 80-year-olds are chatting to people online, even when they meet none of the desired criteria they want in a partner. Researchers believe people are becoming less choosy to increase their chances of finding love or casual encounters. Well, earlier I spoke to Joe Hemmings, who's a dating coach and behavioural psychologist, and Nikki Hodgson, the author of The Curious History of Dating. Having just written this book about the history of dating, um, I'm not actually that surprised. I think people have often uh, had a fantasy ideal of the kind of partner they're looking for, had a little experiment, put, dipped their toe in the water with flirtation. Uh, for example, in Regency balls, people would often spend a lot of time uh, fanning their fans in certain ways to, in, to give certain messages to other people with no intention of carrying anything forth. Um, so that idea of just trying your luck and just practising your skills, that's, all, you know, that's always mm. been... Uh, a pattern of behaviour. I think the problem that we're having now is that um, the new generation of dating apps are based on games. We have this problem of gamification. So they're meant to hook us in and have us using them and interacting with the other people as if we're just playing a game with them. And psychologically, I think that's quite difficult. And it's, it's not the best place necessarily to set something up that you want to kind of carry on long term. So I think actually people are using apps as a way of kind of getting a dopamine hit. You know, there's a kind of chemical reaction that's going on. And they're not necessarily putting any investment in. And then at the same time, they're complaining that they're not able to find a partner. What do you think, Joe? Is it getting too easy? Is it becoming a dopamine I think hit? It's getting too difficult, actually. I think that's a myth of choice. So I think that's why people are very picky or were very picky when apps first came out, because they thought there was a whole world of opportunity out there. And actually, there's a great deal more swiping going on than there is dating going on. So that, that is a myth of choice. In fact, the, it's quite narrow, really, the field of who you can choose, plus the information on apps is becoming, for those that are using them, more and more scant. So you've got a name, a photograph, sometimes an age and a location. I mean, you can't be that particular because you don't have enough information well, it, to make it an informed choice. It allows to game the system, doesn't it, as well? Does yes. It, well, you know. well, it does. I mean, and, and Nikki's right, it is a bit of a game and the intent isn't always there with people either. So I think you've got to go from being very particular to thinking core values. I just want someone who seems decent, honest, you know, seems like a kind and considerate person rather than, than a whole shopping list full of things that are, you know, basically unattainable, really. Let's try and give the story some substance. Uh, Stephen White, who uh, is the author of this report and the study from the University of Queensland in Australia, said people are more than happy to initiate contact with potential love interests that bear no resemblance whatsoever to Mr or Mrs perfect. I mean, Nikki, it suggests that there is a growing cohort of people using online dating who actually aren't interested in a lifetime partner at all. It's a, maybe a casual hookup. Um, and we all, you know, it's funny, hookup, the phrase was in our script. I changed it to encounter because there is, there is a sort of generational problem here, isn't there? There's a sort of set of mores now that anybody under 30 completely signs up, maybe not signs up to, gets. Anybody over 30, over 50, they're struggling a bit. We need to explain what's happening, don't we? Well, it's interesting because, again, if you look historically, there have always been periods where people have had huge amounts of casual sex, mainly war times. And, you know, when yeah. things are going on socially, economically, that are difficult for people, they do just start to hook up. <laughs> um, you know, it's a modern term, but it's not a modern practice. Mm. Um, the, the app culture is kind of compounding it. And, uh, you know, I think, I think it really is... There's nothing wrong with casual sex if that's what you've signed up for and that's what you're being honest about. But the problem for lots of people is that they're not honest about what they're looking for, often because they don't know what they want themselves. And then what they're doing is they're using these apps as a way of kind of getting an ego boost. But, you know, there might be residual problems about why they can't commit. They haven't sorted out, uh, you know, issues to do with um, the family environment they were brought into. They could be hiding another partner. There are all these kinds of reasons for why they are playing, playing these kinds of games. And then at the same time, the younger generation, digital natives, that have never known any different apart from dating via apps aren't very good socially able to make conversations in bars or you know um, go to group activities where they can meet people organically mm. Joe my was it now four teenage daughters will not ask my advice about online dating but were they to do and you're an expert in the field what would you tell people well, I'd say it's an option and, and use it and know your app and use it effectively. I think for teenage girls, you know, girls up to 30, actually, it's, it's quite good fun. I think what happens after 30 years, and women don't always know this, is a disparity of numbers. There are a lot more men on there, which means they can... By what, By what sort of order? I'd say six or seven 
to one wow. from 35 plus. So if women are not aware of that and they're wondering why, you know, there is that sort of hookup culture, it's because men can, or why they're being abandoned or ghosted or all those other horrible dating terms where people are just left floundering. It's because men can, because they have a much broader choice, which really brings us back to what we were talking about and women being, you know, over picky or more particular. You just can't afford to be on an app. Isn't part of the problem, Nikki, that it's a bit like smoking. Everybody, everybody's got a great aunt who smoked for 50 years and she's still going strong at 85. Everybody knows somebody who got married successfully having started online dating. But how representative they are, that's the question, isn't it? I, mean, I really think it's all to do with your intentions. I actually met my boyfriend on a dating app, hilariously. Um, uh, and it, Does he find it funny? We, we, <laughs> we both find it hilarious because we're quite old-fashioned and it's not the way we would have tried to meet somebody. What is the better way, then? Um, I would personally preferred to meet somebody organically through a group of friends because the other thing that's really an issue and they're validated it's accountability they? that's exactly yeah. it and that's what the problem is now you go on you know you have a scant profile exactly you know like we've said um it's maybe uh it's qualified by Facebook, which again, you can make up that profile. It's not actually giving you any real clues about the identity of this person, where they work, who they're friends with, what they've done. My clients are yearning. The one thing they say is, I want to meet somebody in real time. Yeah. The old fashioned, the traditional yeah. way. That's what Brief people encounter, now want. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, just in, yeah. in sociable terms, just in real time, not on their phone. And there's a, I mean, there's a pushback now. The new wave of dating organisations tend to create dating communities. So they might have a, a site, a website, a portal that you use, but they're not using apps. They're creating parties for people to go and meet. And I, I think we're seeing this pushback because yes. people are realising that they just apps don't work for lots of people. There's an assumption you'll get overreach and then you'll get a pushback. But it may be actually that some people do retrench and say, um, you know, are revolted by this and do something a bit more traditional. Other people may just continue pursuing the rabbit down the hole and the evolutionary track takes us, well, we know not where. Uh, the boss of Tinder has said recently he sees the future, it's augmented reality, you're walking through this building, you're walking outside, you've got the goggles on, whatever. People will light up, red for available and single, or green, you know, red for married. Mm. It'll all get so much simpler, won't it? I think that'll be even more complicated, to be honest, because again, and also, so soulless. It is I don't want someone to light up a certain no. colour. I want to sort of light up when I see them, or them to I, light up when they see yeah. me. But psychologically, emotionally, not not via and, a little know, so, lamp. I think what's happening as well is that the more that people meet through an interface, they are becoming disassociated from their emotions, from their gut feel feelings, from the pheromones, from all the things that actually are there to tell us if we are really attracted to somebody. And, and if they're saying, I'm flirting, not flirting yeah. anymore because they, you know, you can't when you can it by text but it's not and it's the same very thing. clumsy yeah. you know so but you can't squash this because i don't know i mean you know you've studied it nikki i mean th th there are billions of pounds in play here presumably across globally absolutely but the people that are making these apps cynically know that you know so tinder said from the beginning we made it like a game they never really wanted people to find love on tinder some people have done it's it's a happy coincidence for them you know, so I can, to I can absolutely see a sort of boycott coming on of certain apps to some extent as well. That you are being manipulated. It is a bit like a fruit machine because of the way the, you know, the dopamine is I think, think of it as an option and not your only opportunity. Yeah. That's the problem that people just think, I will only meet somebody on an app. They go out socially, they're with their friends, they're either swiping covertly under the table, they wait till they get home. No one's looking. You know, oh, that person looks interesting. You know, let's have a chat. So it's, I think, get out the mindset that this is the only way you're ever going to meet somebody and use it simply as part of one of the weapons in your dating yeah. armory. Yeah. One of the weapons in your dating armory, eh? Swooping, swooping. Sw <laughs> I won't even attempt to start that, actually. Steady on. <laughs> uh, this is.